Welcome to Virtual Meditation with Shiloh. Uh, hello? Today I, oh. we're working on forgiving ourselves for not knowing the difference between upload and download speeds before getting cable internet. <laughs> That's oddly specific. Repeat after me. I am not my cable internet. Wait, um, I, I, I don't have cable. I'm not a bad... If my video calls, more like video stalls. Uh, hey Shiloh, there's something... I will get AT&T fiber. <laughs> And I will switch classes until you do. Slow upload speeds? You're not a bad person. You just need better internet. With 20 times faster upload speeds, AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience than cable. Get AT&T Fiber with no annual contract. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. Check eligibility at att.com slash get fiber. Based on combined internet 1,000 wired up and download capacity versus major cable providers, one gig service with uploads of 35 megabits per second. Speeds vary, not guaranteed. Restrictions apply. In your attic, fully covered means fully insulated. If you can see your rafters, you're losing heat and money. But with the Home Depot, it's easy to add blow-in insulation yourself in just a few hours. And you'll save up to 15% on heating and cooling costs for years to come. Winter temps are here, so are winter heating bills. Are you covered? Right now, get a free blow-in machine rental when you purchase 10 bags or more of select blow-in insulation. Only at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Hallelujah. My name is Kathy Brox and this is the LUTG radio show. Amen, amen, amen. Jesus loves you, beloved, and so do I. Amen. Glory to God. We made it through another day. I can tell you this. I'm absolutely happy to make it through to another day. To God be all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise. Hallelujah. Today's uh, show is called, um, well, you know what? Before we do that, <laughs> thank you, Heavenly F- Let's just pray real quick. Thank you, Lord God, for you alone are worthy of all the glory, the honor, the power, and the praise. You are our strength and our hope. We glory in you, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that our breath is only because you allow it. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for you have given us power to decree life over ourselves, O oh Lord God. For you, Lord God, love us so much. You you tell us when to come in and when to go out. I thank you, Lord God, for you alone are worthy. We choose to live to the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. I love you. Choose life. I'm staying. Choose life. We ought to look to the hills from which cometh our help. Because that's what it says in the word. And it's true. And sometimes we look to heaven when things are going wrong here in the earth. And God is saying, I could hear him sometimes. Or I would think that this is what he says. Please. It's okay. If you look at heaven as your example, but you're in the earth and I want you to make earth like heaven. Don't retreat here and do nothing in the earth and speak no words to the earth because you are the salt of the earth and the salt gives everything flavor. So if you don't speak a thing, the thing you are running from will be on the next generation after you and your neighbors, and the people next to you, and those that you love. So if you leave without speaking, you're leaving something worse for them to deal with. He said, I put a word in your mouth to speak, and I want you to speak it. So that those next to you and those after you will be able to pick up the word and add to it. And not wonder, what is this? I thank you, Lord God, for giving us understanding, for opening up your word to us, Heavenly Father. For you alone are worthy. I'm here. I want you to be here too. Stay. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, I just thank you for speaking through me today. Amen. Today's uh, message is uh, the blood of Jesus. 
glory to God. You can put a whole bunch of stuff about after the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is our supply. That's what we're going to talk about today. The blood of Jesus is our supply. If anybody knows me, you know that I'm always saying the blood of Jesus is more than enough because the blood of Jesus is more than enough. He has been more than enough for me. He speaks for me all the time. He is my counselor. That is Jesus. He is my counselor. The blood will get up and speak in the courts of heaven for me. Even when I'm not there, he'll speak for me. He'll begin to intercede on my behalf. The Holy Spirit will speak for me and protect me and guide me and love me and stand with me as I take a moment to cry if I need to cry or tell me, yo, you need to cry. Your eyes are dry. Or you need to cry. That pain is weighing down on you. And I don't want you to speak a word against yourself. Cry now. I'm giving you examples. He ain't, ain't said that. But you know. When those waterworks coming. And you you normally a reserved person. You trying to hold it back. And you hear the name Jesus. And you go. Ah! <laughs> Jesus delivered. You hear somebody's testimony. And you start weeping uncontrollably. you like, <laughs> and you start remembering all the pain that you went through. And then God says, but look, I delivered you. I delivered you from that. You ain't got to worry about that no more. No more. You don't have to worry about that anymore. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit, has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The word the is an article and it sets things apart, uh, denoting its particularity. It is a particular thing. It is a separate and particular thing that has an actual origin when something is set apart in that way it's telling you that that it has a space in which it belongs and the chances are it may belong to you and it may not and god is saying fear does not belong to you it is not from the lord god almighty it is from my enemy satan So when God says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, it is setting this apart saying, look, I want you to take a good look at this. God didn't give you that. Not at all. It don't even belong to you. What is in fear? Let me tell you what is in fear. When we move over to the book of Galatians. When we move to the book of Galatians, you'll see what it what is fear. Fear has a particular sort of life. And its life is death and it evokes death. That's all it does is it brings about death. For the flesh lusteth again against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You're like, what? Okay. And so what this is saying, I'm going to read the very first one, and then I'm going to go back to that. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ have made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Meaning don't return to your old sins. Don't go back to doing what you was doing because it is a form of fear. For example, you in a new school. And the first thing you think of is when you see a bully, you see that's the same person. That's the same image of the person that was at my old school. I left my old school because of bullying. And now I see, the first thing I see when I walk through the door 
something that looks like a bully. And so immediately, terror enters your heart. And you have to decide whether or not you're going to become the bully or you're going to let fear overtake you and, you know, surrender to this bully. Either one, it's still it's still bad because it's fear. It's it's created by fear. And so God is saying, don't go back to your old ways. Don't back, go back to your old ways. Verse 18, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of these, which I tell you before, as I have told you, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do these things should not inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you are saying, well, what is the difference between the spirit of sin and hell and God? The Holy Spirit is God. And when you hear a reference to uh, the spirit with a small s, that's talking about sin. That's talking about sin. When you see a, a capital S, that's talking about Jehovah God. But focus on Holy Spirit. That way you don't never get it wrong. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. I had a person tell me one day trying to confuse me. Because I was kind of new to Christ. And they, they weren't. They knew they knew about God. They knew about hell. And they were serving hell. And they were saying things like, well, you know, I follow the Spirit. And they got to saying all kinds of things about Jesus. Blankety blank Jesus. I said, ooh, okay. Well, they don't believe in Jesus. They believe in something called the Spirit. I had to figure out what the Spirit was. Exactly. I knew that that person was referring to hell. And so what we started doing was we started praying for them. Praying for them because... We knew that we didn't know everything, but we knew that going against Jesus meant you go to hell. And we knew that they didn't truly know what hell was like because if they did, they would not be promoting it. And which is why I say this. Yesterday I saw on uh, Instagram, I saw a person, this young lady, she was sitting on the beach uh, and she was in New Jersey. She was sitting on a New Jersey beach and she had a baby with her. Um, and I guess she was watching a baby and she was probably drinking something. And I guess the police have the right to come up and ask you if you're drinking something and to give you a breathalyzer test. Well, the guy asked her to blow into this thing and she don't know whose mouth has been on this thing before. I mean, did he clean it in front of her? I don't know. I, I have no idea. But anyway... She goes and she she blows into it. She puts her mouth on it and she blows into it. And it comes up with zero. But he didn't tell her that. He begins to ask her her name. At the point that she did not fail this test, there was no reason, according to what people are saying, there was no reason to ask her for her name. You just move on to the next person. She ain't drunk. She ain't violating. She ain't doing no violation. She ain't violating the law by being drunk on the beach. Okay, cool. So he asks her her name and uh, she gives him her first name. And I guess he's trying to look up warrants or something. And anyway, um, she he says, well, what's your last name? She says, well, I don't really have to tell you that. You're not giving me a ticket. You're not arresting me. And so she stands up to call her family over and to, you know, to get the baby. And she's walking away because he didn't detain her. He didn't detain her. So she's walking away. And the guy, the police officers, two of them. The police officer says, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get you now." Something to that effect. He he made a statement. I can't. I don't have the exact words, but I put it on um the on the Instagram on and on Twitter. But he made a, a statement, um, and his camera caught it to the effect that he was gonna detain her. So he's gonna detain her, but he didn't tell her that he was gonna detain her. And so he basically tells her, "I'm gonna." tase you i'm like how is he gonna tase her and he didn't even tell her what she did wrong she didn't do anything wrong she followed the law 
And so I'm getting upset because she followed the law and she's still wrong. How is she wrong when she followed the law? And so um, the guy uh, tells her to stop. So she stops and she's calling her family. And then this cop, this police officer, um, I guess he tries to taser and she's like, no, stop. And she's trying to, I guess, get the baby. And um, the guy, he starts wailing on this woman that looks to be about 100 pounds. He's like twice her size. I mean, like muscle and fat. Like twice her size and his two big men pounding on this woman. One is holding her and the other one raises his hands up. And I caught, I snapped the picture. And he raises his hands up pounding at this woman. And she's screaming. He's pounding this hundred pound woman who's being held down by the other one. And it, and people saying, well, stop resisting. She's not resisting. She's in pain because every time he hits her, it hurts. She's not resisting. She's moving because of the pain. He's pounding a hundred pound woman. They basically have between 300 to 400 pounds of weight on this woman because the average man is about 150, 180 pounds or more. And they were fat. So they could have been more. They were big men pounding on this woman. To me, they look like big men and I'm upset. And so I'm thinking the thing that I heard when he first said that he was going to stop her, that he was going to accost her is I heard a spirit of sin. It was a deliberate act. He wanted to put his hands on her. And the only way he thought that he could have her was to beat her into submission. When you feel anger arise... When you feel anger arise, ask yourself, is that me? Because remember, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This man did not exercise the power of God, the love of God, nor a sound mind, which is from God, the Holy Spirit. When you feel anger arise, stop. Because we want you to stop killing, stop beating, and stop wounding. Stop and ask yourself, is this God? Is this me? You may, be, you may belong to a group that, that has decided to restore the power of your forefathers who reigned in terror. Who reigned by terror. I tell you, some of you think, oh, you're talking about the Ku Klux Klan. There is terrorists all over the world that do not belong to the Ku Klux Klan. Don't see them as the only face of terror and of Satan. Don't. There's more. But I tell you, they do not have power. They had no power. They were being controlled by the spirit of fear. That told them that they must beat upon someone to have power. That they must take away and make them impoverished to have power. I tell you this. They, didn't, they do not get good sleep and sweet sleep in their beds. They do not rest soundly in their beds. Their waking hours look to the skies pondering the vengeance of the Lord. If they are wise enough even to fear God, to reverence God. When you are asking yourself, is this is me? Is this me? When you hear that voice telling you to do wrong, call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus right now. When you have a when you have a mustard seed of true justice, you hear the minds of sin speaking foul things and mocking you. Call on the name of Jesus. Call 
on the name of Jesus. In the Exodus 21, 4 through 6, it says, if the, if the master have given him a wife and she have borne him sons and daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door or unto the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl and he shall serve him forever. The enemy is trying to get you to serve him forever for an eternity. And he's using it in a form of racism, classism, and poverty. He's having those that are impoverished to hate the rich. He's having the rich to hate the impoverished. And he's having the rich to put your foot on the impoverished. And he's having the impoverished to burn down and to tear down the places of the rich. And then he's having the rich to say, see, I told you we couldn't trust them. And he's having a poor to say, hey, I told you we couldn't trust them. Because what they're doing is they're arresting us without cause. They're beating us for no reason. And he's turning man who is made in the image of the most high God against God. He's turning you one against the other. And the person you begin to blame is the Lord God Almighty. You begin to blame Jesus rather than the one who is inciting the violence against you. You're blaming Jesus for what the enemy is doing. You're blaming Jesus for what Satan is doing. Satan is inciting violence in the hearts of man. I also saw on Instagram a man that went to California. It was in California and he went to the powers to the city council. And he told them six of my friends have killed themselves. They were soldiers and they took their own life because of coronavirus. They took their own life because their businesses failed. Because you shut down the cities, you shut down the towns, you won't let people shop, you won't let people go out. You won't let us open businesses. Our families are hungry. And he says, if you do not open up our businesses, we will come for you. He says, we will riot. There will be no peace. He says, you still get paid and they get paid tax monies. They get paid by the state. But if there's no taxes coming in soon, they will not get paid. Civil servants and elected officials get paid by the government. We, the people are the government, but yet this man is saying you have made it so that we, the people cannot live. And then he makes another error. He says he's blaming the Democrats for the coronavirus. That is pitting Republican against Democrat, man against man. That Satan does not care whether you are a Democrat or Republican or any party. He only cares that you are made in the image of the most high God. And he wants you not to serve the Lord. And if it, if it takes you to beat and to kill one another, then that's what he'll do because he don't like you anyway. He don't love you. He don't like you. And he's trying to get you white people, get you rich people to tell poor people and people that don't have your same skin color or your wealth or your faith. He's telling you to enslave them. He's telling you to get them to surrender by terror, to enslave them so that they will work for free so that you can make money. Check this out. You ain't taking that money with you, son. When you leave this earth, you're going to go before God and he's going to punish you for not having mercy on your fellow brother, on your fellow man. All the money in the world will not save your soul. And I tell you this, there will be a great war.
before people surrender to this mess. Some of you are like, well, I got slaves already because you're pimps. And you got these women locked up and chained to bed. You stole them. You lied to them and you've been beating them. God got your number. The Lord got your number. You ain't free. Remember those dreams you've been having. Just like Pharaoh had dreams. Guess who you are? You are the Pharaoh of today. You're the Pharaoh of today. And you keep trying to tell the prophets and the teachers of the body of Christ that you're going to lock them up. You are the Pharaoh of today. But Jesus made it so that we ain't got to be another Joseph. We free. All of us are free. And each and every person in this earth has a right to be free. You do not have to give in to terror, nor lies and deceit. You don't. Don't give in to it. Not at all. Revelations 21, 5 and 7 says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write these words, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. You do not have to hurt, kill, impoverish, beat, molest, rape, assault, or denigrate any person. God has more than enough for every man. More than enough. A man is a male and a female. God has enough for every person. Jesus paid the price on the cross for every one. Psalms 42 and 8 says, Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and the night, and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. Jesus is life. The Lord is life. And he is with you day and night. You do not have to fear. For the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The fruits of the Spirit of God is in verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. That sum up the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. This is the big S. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lusts, meaning you have overcome. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. You feel me? You see what I'm saying? Don't provoke one another to violence. Don't envy one another. God has more than enough for everyone. The Lord has more than enough for everyone. Everyone. And the, the book of uh, Revelation chapter 7, it talks about um, us on the throne with God. It says, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. This is talking about what's coming. About the revelation of Jesus, salvation of Jesus. Holding the four winds of the earth. And about the end times, holding the, holding the four winds of the earth, that the winds should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any of 
or any tree, any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. Those, those are, that would be the body of Christ. And I heard, a, and I heard the number of them, which were sealed, that were sealed with a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed uh, 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Aser, Aser was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephthalim was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zabulon was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph was sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin was sealed 12,000. 12,000. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man can number of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with the, with white robes and Psalms in their hands and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders of the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God saying, amen, meaning we agree blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. We agree. They open with agreement. They close with agreement. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. God supplies. The blood of Jesus supplies. Amen. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. That would be Jesus. He's talking about our salvation, us, one with the Lord. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. They cry for the, cried for the souls of man and for those that said no to God and some of those will be family members. And so God removes that family member from their mind and heart so that they grieve no more. If you are sinning and you are going against God and you go to hell, your family will not remember you. In hell, if you see your family, you may want to hug them, but you will not be able to hug them, nor touch them, nor console them. You will be in your own torment. You'll be set just far enough apart that you cannot reach one another. And that in itself is another torment. Jesus loves you and he wants the best for you. Beating and killing people because of the color of their skin, because of their political objections to yours, is an, it is against God. It is against God. That is not what he has for your life. That is not what he wants for you. That is not what he wants for you. God wants you to be blessed and he wants you to be in peace. 
He wants you to love and to be loved. He wants you to be honored. He wants you to be a blessing. God loves you. And I'm calling on the police officers and the civil servants and the elected officials to be slow to anger and quick to listen. Do not beat up on your citizens, whether you are in America or another country. Do not beat upon your citizens. Whether you are a kingdom, whether you are the head of a kingdom or a democracy, do not beat and kill and ravage your citizens. Some of you think that you're doing social engineering. What if somebody had beat up on the man that invented the peanut and all those things and all those different products for the peanuts from the peanut? What if the person that created the automobile were beat and killed? What if the person that saved your daughter's life, you had killed them before they could become a doctor? What if the heart surgeon that perfected a particular heart surgery was what you needed and they happened to be a different color than you? Would you not allow them to save your child or to save your life? We ask these questions time and time again. And and it seems as though some of you will relent at that moment for the safety of your child or your own life. But in the moment that they're finished, you go back to hating. God is asking you to put down those swords of hate. Put down that spirit of hate. It does not belong in you or on you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the free will of man. I pray for the free will of man that you will receive your freedom and that you will not pick up sin ever again I don't want you to just turn from sin I want you to turn from sin and to stay away from it because it is trying desperately to kill you and if you don't heed God if you don't hear him now you will die and he will not come get you because You're going to need somebody to intercede on your behalf. But if you have tormented all these people. And if you have led them to sin. And you led them to beat upon other people. Why would they want to pray for you? It would take a miracle. God says to pray for your enemy. But in their mind, if you're dead and gone, they think it's from God. Why would they pray for you if they think God did it? So this is how they're praying for you while you are alive. They're saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. And when they're crying out for mercy, God says to you, Please, don't hit that woman no more. Have mercy. Have mercy. Don't hit her no more. Have mercy. Please, stop arresting these people. Stop killing them. Stop. Have mercy. You're going to want mercy from me. But because you're not showing mercy to them, I can't show it to you. Have mercy. Please. Have mercy. I pray that you will exercise the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, for our elected officials. I thank you, Lord God, for justice in politics and free will. I thank you, O God, that these elected officials 
choose justly and right. Not to serve themselves, but to serve God. I thank you, Lord, that our elected officials don't give our country over to our enemies or to foreigners that only seek to do us harm. There's one thing when a person is seeking a new land for a better life, but there's a whole nother when they want to bring in tanks and kill all the people in it to expand their own country or to get the oil or the resources from it to steal the monies and to kill off those that don't look like them. Have mercy. God wants to extend mercy to you through his blood. Salvation was purchased by the blood of Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to, now is the time. Now is the time to give your heart to the Lord. Now is the time to say yes to God. Now is the time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to, you want to be forgiven of your sins, repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was. From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly, 100%. Make me a light in a dark place. And from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with the evidence of speaking in tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God with evidence of interpreting tongues. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Congratulations, you just got saved. Amen. You are saved by the blood of Jesus unto Jehovah God, the Father. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is in the earth now as our comforter. Amen. The mind of Christ who leads us in the way to go. Amen. Glory to God. Begin reading your Bible, starting off with the book of John, chapter 1. Amen. As you're reading a Bible, a book in the New Testament where John is, um, I also want you to read uh, a book in the Old Testament, starting off with the book of Genesis. Amen. So read the book of John first before you do anything else. And then after you read the book of John, go back to the book of Matthew and, and uh, the book of Genesis and read at least one or two chapters every day. All right. Uh, and look for a Bible based church. Amen. Let God lead you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for leading each and every listener to a Bible based church that they may grow in uh, the Lord. Amen. I thank you, Lord God, for every person receiving you in spirit and in truth that you may make your home in them. Praise the Lord that they may have an encounter with you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, please become a sponsor of LUTG Radio. Uh, we do need your help. Um, LUTG Radio, WKKP, uh, Digital Broadcasting. You can uh, sponsor it.